Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning we're honoring Memorial Day, and I must say, it is a pleasure to look out and see so many of the home team here today. Usually on Memorial Day weekend, you sort of think, okay, are we going to break 20? Uh, but we have more than done that, and it's especially great to see so many of you, seeing as many of you were here yesterday for the memorial service, and I do want to thank all of you who worked on or brought things for the, the service yesterday for Marge Pendleton. Um, it was a great time. Jim was most appreciative, and um, I just think that it was nice for us to be able to offer hospitality to so many of our friends and neighbors from around the area. So thank you for all of that. And you know, it's a pleasure to welcome not only all of you who are worshiping with us here in the Meeting House, but also those of you who may be worshiping with us over Zoom. Here at Standish Congregational Church, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's begin our service with the call to worship led by St. Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Let us worship God who is rich in mercy. Who makes us alive in the new Who gives new life out of great love for us. Who leads us and guides us in each generation. And then it breaks. This is our time to share our ministry and mission. Um, Sid, are you going to do the microphone for us? Okay, very good. Um, uh -huh. 
Um, does anyone have something that we need to announce with go to the order today? We're still a week away from women's fellowship, but do we need to make reservations for a women's fellowship? Um, Allison, do you want just let us know? Is that calling you? You're all set. For, okay, that's very good. All right. Um, anything? Oh, I've got one over there. Just a last reminder, and I say that um, thinking. Sorry, I spaced. I'm thinking I'm announcing for next week, but I'll just remind you if you can stay at eleven today. We're doing missions is doing their last and final session on youth and their issues for May is Mental Health Month. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just a general announcement. Uh, next Saturday in Old Orchard Beach is the Scottish and Celtic Festival. It's a local, I call it a home game because it's local and it's a smaller one than the main Highland games, but they still have the heavy games and bands and bagpipe competitions. So anyone that's interested in uh, that, I just thought I'd let you know it's uh, next weekend. Very good. All right. Anyone else? Okay, very good. Thank you. <clears throat> and we'll turn back toward worship with our prayer of invocation. Let's pray. We have entered into your presence, O God, where there are memories of saints messages of peace, imperatives of prophets, where death is overcome by resurrection and the pain of living is turned into redemption, where sin is erased by grace, arrogance overcome by humility, and despair replaced with hope. We are here and you are waiting for us to receive these gifts. Make it possible during our time together to move closer to you and your will. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have a message for all ages today, but looking around, those who are under 18 are now not church school anymore. They are members. And so I'm going to allow them to just remain in their pews and relax. And uh, this is a, a message really for, for all ages. Um, does anyone out there know when Memorial Day got started? Okay. <laughs> Memorial Day began um, being called Decoration Day. And the first place that there is a mention of it is in Waterloo, New York in 1868 on May the 30th. And it was a, a day that was chosen by the mothers of those who had served in the Civil War. Um, they thought that they would like to have a day that they would decorate the graves of those who had fallen in the Civil War. But they thought, we really should put this at a time when we can get flowers. Now, they couldn't just ship in flowers from Holland the way we can. And so they really wanted to wait until the flowers were in bloom. And so that's why they chose the end of May. Um, and there in Waterloo, New York, they just thought this is just something they were going to do locally. Of course, uh, we know that the tradition spread. But as they were thinking about it, these mothers thought, okay, here in our cemetery, we have many of our own young people who, who died in the war, but we also have members of Southern 
units that died in the war. Are we only going to decorate our own sons and grandsons um, graves? No, we're going to decorate all of them. So they decorated all of the graves of all those who had fallen. And that's been a tradition ever since that um, when cemeteries do do mass decorations of, of war dead, um, usually they will do those on both sides. And I think that that's a nice lesson for us to remember that even in those days, right after the Civil War, when it was so very painful and when there was such a lot of feeling on both sides, the mothers all decided, no, we are going to honor all those who've died. So that's what I've found is the, the origin of Memorial Day. And I hope that maybe it encourages us to, to also think about those on both sides of conflicts. I think about all the conflicts that we have happening now in the world and thinking about the fact that the families who are suffering the loss of young people, um, they're on both sides. So let us all pray together. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for loving us and helping us to remember. Thank you, God, for loving everyone. Amen.
Our lesson from the Gospel of John today is a prayer, Jesus praying for his disciples. It's also the scripture which is the source of our motto in the United Church of Christ. You will hear the words that they may all be one. This has been the guiding principle of our denomination ever since it was formed in 1957. Listen for God's word for you today as Sid Pollard reads for us. reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom gave you, who gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. Here ends the reading. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it does not end there. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into this world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Here is the reading. Our hymn is number 536, My Eyes Have Seen the Glory.
Memorial Day. This weekend we pause to remember all those who've been lost in the service of our country. We think back to the great wars and the lesser wars, the policing actions and civil wars, and we remember. Across our country in cities and towns, villages and national sites, we gather to honor those who've given what Abraham Lincoln called the last full measure of devotion. We are not honoring war. We are not taking sides. We're thinking of the men and women who were called to a duty which cost them everything so that we might have the lifestyle and freedoms that we have today. While we're not in a declared war right now, we do have service personnel deployed around the world. Accidents happen, training goes wrong, New names have been added to the honor rolls for this Memorial Day. Working with other of our allies, our troops have been called to foreign shores. It seems that we're always watching troops leave or being welcomed back from battle. Memorial Day asks the question, when will our world understand that armed conflict is not the only answer to the differences which divide us? Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, our hymns today are familiar and are usually associated with times of patriotic celebration. We're at a time when the words we've sung and will sing may seem difficult or inappropriate as we struggle with the conflicts in our own country conflicts between races and religions, between candidates and political parties. It's hard to watch the news. It's hard to know what to believe. But Memorial Day is bigger than any one moment in time. It's bigger than any political position or campus protest. And so our songs are also an act of remembrance. Memorial Day has become a day to remember not only those lost in battle, but also to remember all of our family and friends who have passed into God's eternal care. Yesterday, we had a celebration of the life of one of our members, Marge Pendleton. Now, she was just on the very edge of the group known as the Greatest Generation. She was just a child during the Second World War but even children were marked by that conflict. The greatest generation, many of whom have now passed on, were that group of men and women who grew to maturity during the depression of the 1930s and then faced the horrors of the Second World War. They lost many of their friends and family to that conflict. The combination of those world events might have cost that generation their faith, but instead it strengthened their conviction that they were in God's ultimate care. Our lesson from scripture this morning is about that care and comes from the conversation which the Apostle John remembered as Jesus giving his disciples their final instructions in the days before his crucifixion. They were sitting around after supper and Jesus told them many things, to love one another, to preach the word, to serve the world. And finally, he began to pray for them and through them to pray for all of us. Catherine Matthews writes about this passage and prayer in John's gospel in these terms. The disciples' world was about to be turned upside down they were on the brink of losing Jesus to death. John's community must have felt small and vulnerable, facing strong opposition from the world around them. Don't worry, Jesus tells them, before turning to God in prayer, asking that they will be protected, entrusting them and all who would follow 
into God's care. Jesus asks that they will be one, that they will be made holy. More than that, that they will experience joy. In some mysterious way, perhaps all of that is what it means to trust, to love, to be one, to be holy, to know joy. And this is also what it sounds like when Jesus prays for us. Gail R. O'Day wonders what might happen if we remembered that we are a community for whom Jesus prays. We often hear about the faith of Jesus, and in this passage, that faith is trust. O'Day draws on Karl Barth to describe the way that Jesus prays, boldly reminding God of God's promises. Like so many people of faith before and after him, you have given, you have sent, you have loved. Now keep, sanctify, let them be one. This is a prayer, O'Day says, that is very much in accord with God's own will. Each time Jesus speaks of being one, he's talking about the way he and God are one and how we are drawn into closeness to God because we know Jesus Christ. The greatest generation knew and felt those commands and promises. They felt that they had been sent, that they had been called to be keepers of the faith, servants of the world. Their faith gave them the courage to live through the Armageddon of the war years. What can we learn from the faith of those who were called to go to war in the 1940s? The faith of those who fought in Korea? The faith found in the jungles of Vietnam? What can we learn from the trenches of the First World War and the prayers uttered on the psalm? This morning, we sang words of faith from the Civil War in the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Memorial Day is more than a chance to remember. It's a chance to learn from the faith of those who've gone before us. Our lesson from the Gospel of John says of these people, they are yours. Those of whom this is said chose to trust God no matter what. God created and protected them. But Jesus went farther than that to a level of deeper intimacy. Again, we're drawn into that closeness to God because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're assured that our trust is well placed even th thousands of years later. When we're going through change, loss, and uncertainty, we can take heart that other faithful people, like the greatest generation, have been here before us. We can take heart when we remember that we have one another to love. We have the assurance of the word, and we have the comfort of knowing that we are a community for whom Jesus prays. As we think about those who've lost their lives in the conflicts that are both the conflicts now and of past centuries, we remember them as people who belonged to God. God was with them and guided them through the fire and storm to a place of peace and hope and joy. No matter what we face in our lives, if we trust in the God to whom Jesus prayed, the God into whose hands we have been placed, we will find that our guide is there. On Memorial Day, as we recall the names and remember their deeds, may we thank God for their witness of courage and trust and love, and may we seek to follow in their path of faith. Amen. This is our time for sharing joys and concerns. If we could have someone on a microphone, here comes Sawyer.
We'd like to ask for prayers for our daughter, Christine, her husband, Josh, our two granddaughters, and Josh's extended family as Josh's dad passed away this week. His name is Stephen Galliotti. Uh, prayers for a longtime friend, uh, Bobby Cook, who uh, is recovering from a recent heart attack. And for another uh, friend, uh, a high school classmate, Henry Kingsbury, who was uh, battling uh, health concerns. And Thanksgiving uh, for this congregation as Sally is lifted up and uh, supporting each other in times of need and celebration. Thank you. I wanted to take a minute to tell you about um, a wonderful memorial, which is the Shaw's Mill Cemetery and the history of it. Um, buried in that cemetery on Shaw's Mill Road are the Shaw family and the Moulton family. So you recognize the name of Moulton. So Sergeant Shaw was given a King's Grant if he started a lumber mill on the brook that's there which he did. And from that, the town grew because it had lumber to do. I say this because that is a heritage for Standish that's coming down to us. The Shaws married the Moultons and Peter Moulton. Um, Greg Moulton is a ancestor, is living now from his ancestor. Peter Moulton also buried there. Um, and it is so meaningful to me, particularly because I live on the Shaw Farm. And we have a picture of the last Shaw at that mill who made Standish possible with his horses at the mill. We lived in that house up to 2015 when it was taken down. And I just feel like the Shaws and the Malton indeed helped Standish grow. And I'm very grateful and I want to remember them during this. Any more words? I've got a couple more. I learned something yesterday during the celebration for Jim Pendleton. I didn't, I, I believe the crosses on the sill were made by him. So we have these in memory of him. Um, and one thing I also learned in parting yesterday with him was that one of the greatest experiences he had was coming to this church. So uh, I just wanted to bring up a story and a thought. So um, on Saturday, um, the troop was out working with a group called the Summit Project um, that they <clears throat> will work with the families of, of fallen uh, soldiers, airmen, sailors, police force, you know, service members. And they work with the families to go to a special place um, and find a stone from that special place that they remember being with that fallen member of their family. And they get the stone engraved and this group of uh, veterans will team up with other groups like uh, in, the, in the case of this last week or this uh, yesterday uh, with um, motorcycle riders. And they will take the stones on journeys, whether it be to uh, like in, yesterday, they went to Baxter State Park uh, so it's a seven hour drive because they do multiple stops on the way and it's a big convoy. As you can imagine, a Memorial Day weekend, um, the state police shutting down pockets of the highway going up there is quite a thing. And then when they get up there, these stones are put in rucksacks and veterans hike them up four summits. And the families get reports of all, <clears throat> everything that happens. They bring the families in, they put on a big shindig uh, at Baxter State Park for them. And they do this all year round. And 
These stones are not small. They're, some of them are quite large. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, the scouts had hiked them up a mountain or two a couple times. But what it got me remembering was every one of these people were members of our community that laid down the ultimate sacrifice. Another part of the story is um, I play with a jazz quartet. And one of the people that comes into the, uh, the house that we play at, um, she's from Ukraine. Her family migrated to Ukraine, uh, from Ukraine to the United States. And she turned us on to a song, which I've always heard as the Carol of the Bells. And um, actually, it's a song that was originally started in Ukraine called Shedrick. And that song is about the uh, turning of winter into spring. And they leave their windows open and a swallow comes in. And if the swallow comes in, it's a, good, a sign of good fortune and good harvest for the, for the summer and spring. And um, she said it means a lot to them right now because the Ukrainians are still waiting for the swallow. And she brought up a startling t statistic that the casualties of just the Ukrainian war right now is about to top a million. That is like <clears throat> the entire population of Maine gone. And that's just one. And the thing that <clears throat> makes me think about this is we talk about the greatest generation. You, young ones, can be the greatest generation. Learn from our mistakes. Make, make the decisions that turn this world around. Sorry, don't mean to get choked up, but it's one that I have Very good. <clears throat> Anyone else? Okay. With all of these joys and concerns, <laughs> Let us now turn our hearts and minds to our God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God of all our generations, we come to you today as a people remembering. We give you thanks for all of the acts of courage and sacrifice which have been given over many years to keep us safe and to provide for the freedom and liberty we experience today. We remember all those who paid the ultimate price in the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, the First World War, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Iraqi freedom, and if in Afghanistan and other places where our troops are called to serve, even here in the United States. We have many opinions about these conflicts, and we realize that war is not the way that you would have us address grievances among nations, but we remember with love and respect those who have served our country and those who even now are serving in the armed forces. We think about Sam and Asia Connell in the National Guard and Jamie Linda Rocher in the Air Force, whether they're home or overseas, May they feel our support and your care. God of love, we give thanks for all that we have, for the many blessings we've received from your hand. Forgive us when we're slow to share with those in need. Remind us of the concerns of our neighbors and friends. Today we think about Christine and family with the passing of Stephen. We think about Bobby Cook, who's suffering from a heart attack and Henry, who's got health challenges. We think about all of the people in Ukraine and Gaza and all places of violence and war. You are a God watching over us on difficult days, but also on days of joy. And we give thanks for all of the different heritage and relationship gifts that we've been given. We think about this church and the way that we are able to support one another. We think about the Shaw's Mill Cemetery and the heritage and history of Standish. We think about the crosses on the windowsills, which remind us that Jim is present with us here, even as he may be watching on Zoom, but also that it's a memorial to Marge as well. And we think about the Summit Project, the scouts honoring those who have fallen in different ways and the gathering and all that took place at Baxter State Park. 
Spirit of play and refreshment, watch over all who travel this holiday weekend. Caution everyone to moderation in exercise, in food and drink, so that it's a safe and healthy time of rest. All this we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> freely we have received, freely give. The ushers will wait upon us for our offerings and our tithes. And our hymn is number uh, 531, My Country Tis of Thee.
sends us forth from the gathered church to be ambassadors for Christ. God looks for anyone who will lift instead of lean, help instead of hinder. Go to claim a corner of the world for God, and may God's spirit go with you and abide with you. Amen. Thank uh -huh.